Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Alan. I'm Matt. We are so happy you're joining us tonight, whether that's on our Instagram page live or here at the church in your small groups. Wherever you're engaging with us tonight, we are so happy that you are. Um, but also, we're in our second week of our tattoo series. Ash has got another good talk. Mm -hmm. She's gonna rain it down, bring the house down tonight. So, Make it rain. we're looking forward to that. And with that said, how was your week? The week's been good. One, one thing that made, made me laugh was the first time me and Alan did this, Either I look like a giant or Alan looks tiny, but yeah. Alan's like six feet tall. And this, this <laughs> looks, just looks weird, so give him some credit. But uh, my highlight this week has been playing Among Us, which I don't know if you guys have played yet, but it is awesome. It's like Murder in the Dark, but you play on your phone with your friends. Oh, which is online best. without people you know. Yeah, and it's, it's great. Right, and I mean, if you haven't yet, if you play with Matt, he is the GOAT. I mean, I've only played a few times, but you are definitely the best person I've played with. You know who it is every single time. Every time. Yeah. No, that's, that's shout out to some people in my small group who talk well. Right. But yeah, also them. leaders, get on that. It's fun. Kiddos, you know, show who's boss. So, awesome game. Yeah. Well, yeah. again, we're glad you guys are with us. Keep those masks on. If you're joining us online or in person, we're excited. It should be a fun night. We'll see you guys later. All right, everyone, welcome to tonight's game. I'm Matt. And I'm Ash. And uh, we got like 10 gallons of water above us right now, which is great. You might wonder why. Because you did take a shower today. Because I did. I did take a shower. You never know with quarantine. But um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be doing a spelling bee, seeing which of us is the better speller, because the worst one gets for sure the whole bucket dumped. At least once. Yep. So what you're gonna be doing is our game host, Alan, is gonna be giving us a word to spell. You are gonna have about 10 seconds to spell that word uh, while we ask things like the origin and use it in a sentence, and then see if you can get more right than us, all right? Sound good? Sounds great. All right, what's our first word? You, you can go first. You want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. What's my first word? All right. Matt, for round one, your first word, is a parent. Matt has a parent. Is that no, how you can it is a parent that there is a bucket of water over your head. And what's the origin? Your parent. So helpful. Um, okay, A P P A R E N T. A parent. That is correct. Woo. Congratulations. Nice. Lucky. You live nice. to see another dry day. For now. Ash, your word is publicly. Right. Can you use that in a sentence? I don't only strut my stuff privately. I walk with swagger publicly. Oh. That makes you just me, made it up on the spot That makes too. me feel like I have so much greater understanding of how to spell this. Publicly, yeah. P U B L I C A L L Y. That is incorrect. Publicali. Yeah. <laughs> It is P U B L I C L Y. Oh. You have to loosen the hand blank. Yeah. I'm just trying to. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's just, it's still, it's going. All right, what's my word? Your word for round two is beautiful. Beautiful. That one feels so easy to me. There's so many vowels in a row. No. This is a word I have a hard time with, I'll be honest. I know it starts with a B. That is correct. E. <laughs> a. U. T I F U L. Matt, that is correct. <laughs> Congratulations. Woo! Ash is regretting doing this more. On to Ash. 
Yep. Your word for the second round, and the big word here, very prevalent, is tattoo. Oh, I thought it was gonna be prevalent for a second. I, I was, was like, good be luck. Presbyterian. Um, <laughs> tattoo. Okay, T A T T O O. Ash. That is correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if there's two T's there or not. Ha! <laughs> Got him. Got him. Got him. On to the third round. But as the minutes pass, so do the dry minutes as well. <laughs> Matt, your word for round three is reminisce. Oh, there's no way. Can you use it in a sentence? I like Later tonight, you will reminisce on when you were dry. Yeah, it's a great time to just use the word think instead of this word. Uh, the origin, whoever created this terrible word. Moses. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, R, E, M, I, N. I S C E. <laughs> Man, Matt, that is correct. What? Congratulations. I knew there was something funky about it, but. You can see Ash's hand tremble around the rope. That is another big word. I can't Ash, believe you just got that right. <laughs> your word you can't for. can't even like <laughs> spell my name, but go ahead. <laughs> your word for round three is ferocious. That Donald Baxter. Donald yep. Baxter. Mm, ferocious. F U R. F E R. O S C I O U S. That is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> don't let go of the whole thing because I don't want to fall. All right. As we proceed around four, the stakes oh, are thing. higher. As these buckets are also higher. We're gonna do a quick adjust while y'all are. What's my <laughs> And we're back to round four, where the stakes are high as these buckets of water also hang high overhead. Matt, your word for round four is Pharaoh. Is it feral or feral? Pharaoh as in a like pharaoh of like Egypt. Like a feral cat. P H A R O A H. Matt, that is incorrect. No. You had the A and the O swapped. It is R A O A. Oh! Oh yeah! It's so cold! It's so cold! <laughs> Why did I just get so wet? Look at my face! Okay, we're it's so hard to hold! We're back. Round four. The hose water. I think we're on like round five, yeah. but it's okay. Ash, your word for this round is propaganda. Okay, propaganda like the uh, so artist propaganda. Sure. My propaganda is now wet. P R O P A G A N D A. Ash, that is correct. Woohoo! Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Buzz. The public transit system of Boulder congratulates you. So much for me. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. On to round five. Great. Where we so shiver great. at the fear of the word. Yeah, it's nice. It's somewhat warm. Matt, your Hello. word for this round. Is accommodate. Can you accommodate how cold I am by covering it up? <laughs> I'm letting the people spell because I'm obviously gonna get it right. I know. A C C O M A D A T E. Matt, that is incorrect. There are two M's <laughs> in accommodate. No. All right, I was done here. Now I gotta. There's nothing better than a nice cold shower. Oh, it's balancing. 
something just, I mean, it's, it's loose. Well, mine decided it needed to be too. <laughs> you got stuck. All right, let me scoot. A few moments later. Ash, your word for round five is... <laughs> this is so uncomfortable. <laughs> is liaison. Oh, like Alan is the liaison Prince liaison. Manchester United. Yes. Man. The United States liaison. Shout out to the Red Zones. L I A S I O N. Ash, that is incorrect. <laughs> you have it is L I A I S O N. Whoa. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Wow. Conveniently missing. It literally is pouring like backwards. Let's do one final round, and then the loser gets the whole bucket. I'm trying. Perfect. Okay, so. Yeah. Matt, your word for this round is. Temperamental. Whoa. Temperamental? You are very temperamental. Temperamental? Yes. Temperamental. Or temperamental. Temperamental. You might as well just put the whole box on you, then I'll probably get it wrong. I have to put the whole box on me. Too. <laughs> so we, both we both have to do it. Um, I know it's T E M P R A M E N T A L. So close, but no cigar. Is it temperamental? It is temperamental. <laughs> Does that? <laughs> oh, oh, I get that. You're gonna have to dump that whole thing your head. Though. I've gotten three one wrong. So this, it all comes down to Ash yep. getting Ash. it right or wrong. Your word is conscience. Oh, I have a clean conscience. Let your conscience be your About guide. This I know game. the origin of this one. What's the origin? Pinocchio. Jimmy, Jiminy the Cricket. C O N. S C I O U S. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. <laughs> there is a difference between You're conscious and conscience. Okay. All right, do you want the bucket first? Yeah. All right, Alan, I'm gonna let you hold these so they don't fall completely on us. Just hold it tight. I'll get out. It was at this moment that he knew. Oh. <laughs> I held it how you gave it to me. I think that counts as my bucket. All right, bucket. you can do that bucket. How do you do it? <laughs> Don't hit my head. Oh. <laughs> well, figure out who won in your group. Thanks yeah. for joining us. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Peace. We got some fun announcements for you guys. First off being our overnight event is October 2nd. Uh, you're gonna wanna be there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, it's gonna be the place to be on October 2nd. So keep an eye out for details on Instagram. Also, if you're a senior out there, October 23rd, 24th is our senior event called Odos. More details and registration to be released if it hasn't already, um, but that is an event that you want to be at. Um, and then lastly, um, next Wednesday, we'll be right back here uh, at seven or online at 7.30. And I think today is National Checkers Day. So enjoy that fun fact. Uh, and with that, adios. Hi, I'm really glad you're here. My name is Ash. I'm also really glad that football is back. Um, it is 100% saving my life. So glad that it's back and it's here. Um, but like I said, I get the privilege of sharing a little bit more in our series that we're calling Tattoos, where we're sort of looking at 
Um, what are the things in our life that mark us forever? The stories that we tell ourselves, the people around us, the things that have long-term impact on our life and our life with God. And so I know last week, Matt kicked off the series sort of talking about who is it that you let define you and who is it that is your tattoo artist. And today I am sort of looking at a different aspect of that, but I know he showed you some tattoos of, you know, fails where you're like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe that. Well, while I was getting ready for the series, I was on Apple News one day and I scrolled across this article. Crazy, right? It is this article about this young man who was like, this is my dream tattoo. And then the artist somehow did the whole thing backwards. I can't even believe it. Um, but what that goes to say and what has left me asking the question often when I see people out around town or I see an article like that or I even look at the ones that Matt showed last week, I go, why would anybody put that on their body? And then secondly, why wouldn't they get that removed? Like, why isn't that young man figuring out like, how do I get this thing removed or how do I edit it? And I think there's probably three things that come to my mind about why people don't get tattoos removed. One, they like it. I was recently having a conversation with a, a young adult and she was telling me about her next tattoo. She was like, I'm getting an astronaut on my arm. And I was like, why? And she was like, because I want it. And I was like, okay. Um, so I think one reason people keep their tattoos that you and I might be asking why would they do that is they like it. Secondly, it's too expensive or too painful to get it removed. Certainly getting a tattoo is like a neat feeling to some of us, um, but also it's painful. And the rumor on the street is when you get it removed, it's even more painful. So why pay the money? Why go through the pain? Just keep it on your body. And then lastly, I think the other thing that people often do is they decide to cover it up. They try to hide it with something more beautiful. So they add to it or they turn an astronaut into a flower or they turn my face on their arm into a cross. I don't know how the artists do it, but like they do it. So um, all that to say, they sort of come up with some excuses as to what it is that they are going to do to fix this tattoo or they just go, I like it and I don't wanna get it removed. Um, and I want to look more closely at those three excuses that I just talked about, but before I do that, I want us to pick up in a different story in scripture, um, where I think we can learn a little bit about what God wants for our life, as well as this man who had the opportunity to have something removed or taken away from what defined him and how he handled that situation. So, um, if you have a Bible... Turn to John chapter 5. If you don't, that's cool too. Uh, I'm going to read it to us. Um, this comes from John, which is just a fancy word for one of Jesus' life stories. So it says, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been invalid for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and had learned that he had, had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes in ahead of me. And then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once the, mat, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. And so long story short, this man is sitting at this pool, sort of like underneath an alcove or in an alcove. And it's really this pool where a bunch, a bunch of people who are disabled or have some sort of ailment um, sit and when the pool stirs they all sort of try and race in and it's 
the first person that typically gets in gets healed. And so this man has sat there every day for 38 years, which is a very long time, my friends. So every day he'd, he'd get put into his position on the side of the pool. And my guess is he was comfortable. He had learned how to manage his surroundings. He knew what to expect. But somehow, there was no way for him to get into the pool. But he was still holding out hope, or some version of hope, of if I get into this pool, this will get fixed. And so, um, we see Jesus come up to him and ask him this question that says, Do you want to get well? Do you actually want your life to change? Do you actually want to do something different every day than come to this pool and sit here with all of these people? Like, do you want something different? And the man sort of responds to him with an excuse. He says, you know, I can't get into the pool because everyone else goes in ahead of me. And so Jesus, even though the man meets him with an excuse and doesn't really answer his question of, do you want to get well? It says that he just says, get up and be well, and the man starts walking. Crazy miracle, right? But I think there's so much in there for us to learn about what God wants to do in terms of rewriting the stories that we tell ourselves and the things that we let define us. Um, and he wants to show us what does it actually mean to let go of the thing that we've really held close and tight. Um, but one thing I know about letting go of things and rewriting our story is that we can't begin to write a new story if we don't let go of versions of the old one. So right now in my life, my closet and my dresser drawers are driving me crazy. So like I am so ready just to like throw every t-shirt I own out of the window and just go, I'm going to have like three t-shirts. I'm sure I will regret this decision at a different point in my life. But what's been happening in COVID land is I get a new t-shirt and I put it in my drawer and that doesn't mean that I take another one out. Anybody else have this problem? So all of a sudden, I now have acquired new t-shirts and haven't cleaned any of the old ones out. Some of you who are still growing, you go, I don't even know what this is like because I just have clothes that are too small in my, <laughs> in my um, dresser drawer. Whereas for those of us who have like sort of studied out somewhere, we just keep acquiring things and we don't get rid of things. And now our dresser is like stock full of shirts and you can't ever find the one that you want. It drives me mad. But this is this great picture of if we keep adding new things to who we are and to our identity and to our soul and we don't clean out the old things, there's no room for it. So some of it is how do we remove that tattoo or how do we remove that story that we've been telling ourselves so that maybe God could start to tell us a new one. And last week, Matt talked about a lot of things that you may be defining yourself with, or you orient your life around these things, and they are important to you. They tell you who you are. They tell you what you're good at. They tell you who you're not. They tell you all of these stories that you have running in your head. He talked about things like school. He talked about things like sports, your parents, your friends, the people that you date or the people that you don't date. Um, how popular you are, social media, money, all of these things feed into who you are. They tell you a story. And what you probably heard last week was they don't always tell you a great story. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But what we've often found is at the end of all of these things, there's not a lot of life. There's not a lot of fun and joy. There's often just, just turmoil and loss and grief. Um, and so I want to look at today, how do we let go of the stock that we've put into those places, into school and sports and parents and boyfriends and girlfriends? How do we let the man, like that man, let Jesus begin to define a new way, a new way of, of living, a new way of life? How do we begin to let go of things? Um, and what I know about that man at the pool is I presume that he hated his life at that pool, but he also kept going back. I just am curious if you have things in your life that on the outside and on the inside, you go, I kind of hate that I'm about this. I kind of hate that this is so important to me. I kind of hate that these people are my friends and they define me or I don't feel cool if I'm not with them. I kind of hate that. However, you keep showing up. 
You keep playing the sport. You keep being friends with the person. You keep dating that person. And so you find yourself in this tension of, I don't really like this, but I don't know how to be apart from it because I don't know who I am. Um, And what I know is that man probably didn't love his role or his life, but he kept going back to it. It was comfortable. It was a place for him. He had a pattern. He had a role there. Um, And therefore, when Jesus asks him this question of, do you want to be well? Do you want something different? Are you okay of letting go of the pool? He just goes, I kind of don't know. And here's an excuse. Here's an excuse as to why I'm not sure. And I wonder for you, when people ask you if if you really like, you know, the person that you're dating or if you really like the life that you're leading, if you just kind of make an excuse of I have to keep doing this or I have to keep playing the sport or I have to keep getting straight A's or my mom's making me do it. You have all of these excuses. But what I want you to see is that when you say no or you say I'm going to let go of that, Perhaps that makes room for something new and better to begin in your life. Similar to the man when he was told, do you want to get well? And Jesus heals him. His whole life is different. It's drastically different than it was before. And so for us, sometimes it means that we have to say no. We have to go, I actually am not going to put all of my stock and belief and weight and thought into these things, but I'm going to look into something different. And so when I think about that, I think that sometimes similar to this whole tattoo analogy and what I talked about earlier is we come up with sort of three excuses, very similar to what I said before. So when someone goes, hey, do you want to change? Do you want to get well? Do you want to find eternal life? Um, We meet it with sort of three things. I think one first excuse is maybe you actually like being defined by the money you have or the place you live or the person that you're dating. And so you don't actually see any issue with what I'm saying. Fair is what I say to you. Uh, One question I like to ask people who go, I actually don't see any reason or any wrong thing with putting all of my like stock in being the popular kid or the rich kid or the really good athlete. Um, My question to you is what happens when you tear your ACL? Or what happens when your family has to move? Or what happens when you no longer live with your parents and you don't have the money that they had? Or what happens when that person stops dating you suddenly? Like what happens to your soul and your heart and your mind? Often I find that it feels like the bottom of the floor has just dropped out from underneath us. And so maybe it's worth looking at of while there might not be something wrong with it, maybe long-term is not our best solution. I think my second excuse that I see or that I too do is that maybe it's just too painful. It's too painful to let some of those things go. I mean, at first glance, if you let go of like who some of your friends are that aren't healthy or breeding life into you, it could be social suicide. Um, if you let go of you know being the straight-A student or the athlete that is incredible, then maybe you let go of some dream of playing in the NFL or going to college uh, at this specific place. Like if you start to let go of some of those things and you go, they're not the most important thing. It's a good thing, but it's not the most important thing. Then maybe some of those things start to feel like they're not going to be possible. So the painfulness of letting go of these things that we've let define us can often stop us in our tracks and we go, I just don't want to do it. But here's the interesting thing about pain is that often the thing that we are trying to avoid doing or letting go of so that we don't have to feel the pain, we already feel it. So like, You might feel like if I break up with that boyfriend or that girlfriend or I let go of this friendship or relationship, it will be so painful. But my question to you is, is it already painful? Is it already broken? Is it already too much for you to handle? Maybe it's not, but sometimes I think when we go looking for a way to avoid pain, we're already in pain. Lastly, I think the thing that we do um, when we're offered an opportunity to let go of something that is defining us that isn't awesome is that um, we pretend, we hide, we cover it up. Um, We pretend like our identity is placed elsewhere, like in God or um, 
in ourself or somewhere that's good, or even some of the things that we were a part of are good. Like getting good grades is good. Being a good athlete is good. But when we start to go, these are the ultimate things. Um, they start to be this facade that we have going that we just worry when will the shoe drop or when will the floor fall out or when will something bad happen and then we get super anxious and we get sad because we live in fear of being found out. And so we try and hide and we try and put on this facade so that people think that we are okay. Um, which is again a fair excuse. I think we protecting ourselves and avoiding pain or we protecting ourselves with good things can often last for a really long time. But what I know is often those things catch up to us. Similar to a hamster wheel. If you keep running on it, it will eventually wear you out. Like you can't keep doing it forever. Um, so three things, like I just said. One, you actually like the life you lead and that's fair. Two, um, and maybe it's too painful to say no or to let go. Or three, um, you're living a great facade. You have this pretend identity that you are keeping up and it's working pretty well. Um, but I think the invitation from Jesus to that man at the pool was not to keep both, to not keep both lives at play, but to say you can either have your pool reputation or you can be the man who was healed and living and walking. You can't have both. I think the same is true for you. You can cling to, fight for, jump at the identity of being a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a straight A student or rich or smart, or um, let go of those because we know that they're temporary. We know that we don't actually have the control of keeping those things intact, that um, they involve other people. And turns out I can't make you do anything and you can't make me do anything. And so they are outside of our control. So I think the goal of all of this is when Christ invites us to let go of something or to lean more into him versus the stories that we tell ourselves, um, is to not meet it with an excuse, but instead to let go of the old habits, of the old stories you tell yourself, all in the name of making room for this new story that he's writing. So, lots to talk about there in your small groups. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you back here next week.